Hello, I'm Dr. Sean Cohen. I'd like to walk you through the score and bloom technique. In cases of posterior subcapsular cataract or posterior polar cataracts, there is a weakness or potential weakness of the posterior capsule. Hydrodissection, hydrodelineation, lens manipulation, rotation, or even cracking can lead to pressure and rupture of the posterior capsule. To avoid this, we'd like to have a technique where the pressure is not exerted on the posterior capsule, but rather is transmitted through the lens, giving us the advantage of weakening the lens as we proceed. And I'll show you what we're going to do to achieve this goal. Proceed with a continuous curvilinear capsulorexis, and then instead of proceeding with hydrodelineation, hydrodissection, we'll weaken the lens with a Nagahara instrument by scoring it 30 to 40 to 50 percent of its depth. Watch the anterior capsule when you do that. It's easier if you separate your wounds, as I've done here. Now when we do hydrodissection slowly, or hydrodilineation, the energy will be transmitted through the lens instead of posteriorly. The lens will bloom like the winter aconite flower and will blossom. And we'll have, in a petaloid way, we'll have four pieces that will separate from each other, join only at the center. And now we can aspirate the lens with the uh, Bacon emulsification machine just under vacuum and no energy is needed for that. You sometimes have to use your second instrument to manipulate the lens to obtain proper occlusion. As you'll see in just a moment, in order to make it safer, I'll release the lens here, rotate it, and then I can proceed with removal of the lens with vacuum only. At this point, we haven't put any grooving, sculpting, lens cracking, or any pressure on the posterior capsule. We can proceed then with the irrigation and aspiration of the cortical material, and then lens insertion as per normal. So the score and bloom technique converts the energy of hydrodissection into effectively a cracking technique where the energy is transmitted into the lens instead of towards the posterior capsule. And here we have an intact posterior capsule. And we proceed then with uh, lens insertion. So I hope that this has been useful to you. Feel free to join me on the web, on the web at www.supereyecare.com. And uh, in this case, we'll just continue with the lens insertion, which unfolds nicely. And then we proceed with removal of the viscoelastic material and uh, testing of the wounds. I prefer in cases where there is any potential weakness of the posterior capsule to hydrate before I remove viscoelastic. This stabilizes my chamber. Thank you for your time and for your attention.